You basically are celebrating it without the, I guess, the extra things, the trees and the yeah. lights and the gifts. Well, no. I mean. Not if the barrel is Christmas. Right. Christmas lights and confetti looking. Good job. It's the Demon Shots React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today we are back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In 1974, KFC introduced a marketing campaign called Kalisimasu Niwa Kentucky, Kentucky for Christmas. The campaign has turned into a national phenomenon. KFC Japan encourages stores to dress up statues of Colonel Sanders and Santa Garb. Their Christmas party barrel meal includes family-sized boxes of chicken, mashed potatoes, and wine for $32. These wine. packages account for about a third of the chain's yearly sales in Japan. Wine? Wine at, selling wine at, at KFC? KFC? <laughs> Really? Nice. That's, okay. And sales of popular franchises increased tenfold during Christmas. 3.6 million families eat KFC during the Christmas season. It's a national tradition. And it all began as an impulse promotion by a store manager in Nagoya. So you can't talk about us doing gumbo no more. While KFC gained traction in Japan in the 70s, the U.S. had been promoting the industrialization of Japanese chicken production since World War II. Did you know that poultry is the nation's third largest agricultural crop? A three billion dollar business? Starting in the 1950s, Japan began importing grain in specialized chicken breeds from the United States. Next, the industry began to mechanize. Farms grew from raising 50 chickens to more than 8,000. Battery cages saved space and directed more of a hen's energy to egg production. Chicken production was booming, and with it, Japan's appetite for it. At the center of this import boom was an unexpected company, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi is much more than air conditioners and motorcycles. It's what the Japanese refer to as a Soga Sosha, a vertically integrated trading conglomerate. Hmm. Since 1870, the company has had its hands in mining, shipbuilding, insurance, electronics, and even food and beverage. In the late 1960s, Mitsubishi sent an employee to the U.S. to investigate the success of the chicken industry. This employee happened to meet with the top buyer of chicken in the United States, none other than Colonel Sanders. After four years of consistent... Colonel, man, that's the guy that's on the, the chicken man right here. They, they have the highest page, the highest chicken? I guess so, they got one with it. In the United States. I don't think so. I personally don't know a lot of people that would choose KFC over the popular. I see more. Chicken, I see uh, more churches and Popeyes in my area than I do KFC. Right. Like I, I honestly don't. The last time I ate KFC, I was like a little girl. You know what's so crazy? Um, when I would go to KFC, they would be out of chicken. Really. Mm hmm. So, so I don't I like so. like their stores would be out of chicken and they would close down ten times earlier. From my understanding, that means that other businesses is getting the money. KFC is running out of chicken. So, or people are buying it and we just don't know them. What's up, good? You like KFC? No, I don't try KFC I don't, like that. I don't. The big bucket. No. Negotiations. <laughs> he finally got the nod. In 1970, Mitsubishi and KFC signed an agreement that led to the founding of KFC Japan. In 1973, Takeshi Okawara, a recent graduate of Harvard Business School, was managing Japan's first KFC. Rumors hint that the idea came to him in a dream. Others say he was inspired by the American tradition of serving turkey on the holidays. But here's the real story. A kindergarten spokesperson came into his Ayama branch with a proposition. The school would order KFC for their Christmas party if Okawara would deliver the food dressed up as Santa. Mm. He agreed. Word spread and more and more schools began ordering KFC, hoping that Santa would deliver it. Okawara uh -huh. capitalized on this and introduced a party barrel to the menu as a way to celebrate the holiday. Kentucky The campaign has paid yeah, dividends over the years. In 2017, KFC Japan earned $540 million. But between December 23rd and 25th, 
the company recorded $53 million in sales. That's around 10% of the company's yearly sales in one weekend. Wow. Much of the success of KFC Japan can be attributed to this campaign. Today, Japan is the third largest market for KFC with 1,165 outlets as of December 2014. But it's not just about sales. KFC at Christmas has made its way into Japan's pop culture. This is Maria Takeuchi's classic song, Suteke na Holiday, also known as the Kentucky Kurisumasu song. And maybe what's most surprising about all of this is that Japan doesn't celebrate Christmas. At least the majority. 50% of Japan practices Shintoism or no religion, less than 40% is Buddhist, and between 1-2% to is Christian. Despite this, there are lines around the corner at KFCs around Japan during Christmas. Oh, so, I don't what? understand that comment. It's like they don't celebrate Christmas, but they eat chicken as a tr as a Christmas tradition. So in a way, they are celebrating So you basically are celebrating it without the... I guess the extra things, the trees and the yeah. lights and the gifts. Well, no. I mean, not if the barrel is Christmas. Right. Christmas lights and confetti looking. That's different, yo. Yeah. That's. And then the teacher, the, the kindergarten teacher, wanted him to dress up as Santa Claus. Then he got one of the biggest sales popping in. You know what I'm saying? Because he's actually the owner who's coming in to show respect right. to the kids and love on them. And I'm just like, what's going on here, y'all? I guess. I guess we're missing something. They celebrate Kentucky Fried Christmas. <laughs> that's it, that's all. <laughs> Gulara, he climbed through the company ranks at KFC to eventually become the CEO and president of KFC Japan from 1984 to 2002. Wow. That's good. Man, so... Uh, Change the culture. Yeah, yeah. Change the culture. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't think, though, again, like we was mentioning earlier, that KFC has such an impact. I don't know too many KFC lovers, personally, I, I so... But I do see KFC every blue moon, so I, I didn't I mean, know there was doing such a thing. I mean, we have the restaurants, so we just... It's just not our restaurant. I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to go swing by KFC, then. Last time I went there... When is the last... They're not doing I, it was, spicy. I, I had to be a kid. They're not doing spicy chicken, though. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's all white. Y'all love no KFC doubt. chicken? Y'all gotta get the whole bucket full? Like Yeah, and that's another thing. I just a bucket of chicken. <laughs> a big bucket of chicken. Like I don't know. Is the prices better? I don't think he mentioned too much about the price. He did a know. little bit. But I don't think it's like that's in Japan, you know what I'm saying? Know. It is it's very like interesting. I guess, you know, southern in Japan is a winning spot for them because they just rob with KFC. Kentucky fried so chicken. That's, they, they that's the spot tradition, to go to. Right. Although they don't celebrate Christmas. They understand the market out there. Yeah. They, they won that one. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video. Subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like support the channel that way. As well as our join feature if you would like to become a VIP member of the channel. Yes. Send your reaction request through the description box below. We'll see you soon. <laughs>